Japan, a nation famous for its unique blend of the ancient and the modern. From mega cities and super fast trains to its traditional arts and proud architectural heritage. But beyond this well known image lies another Japan. A land of extremes, a wild country of remote tropical islands, dramatic coastlines. mountain ranges that receive more snow than anywhere else on the planet. Away from the hustle and bustle of Tokyo, we discover cities with cultures all of their own. The unconventional Osaka and Kobe. The ancient island kingdom of Okinawa. proudly traditional Nara and receive stark reminders of some of the most significant events in Japan's modern history. Japan is an archipelago nation home to a diverse range of societies. What forces brought these islands together into a single nation and what obstacles have stood in the way. Japan is made up of four main islands. Honshu, Hokkaido, Shikoku, Kyushu. We start our aerial journey at Japan's southwesternmost point and follow the chain of Ryukyu Islands towards Okinawa. We visit the great maritime city of Hiroshima and the cities of the Kansai region, including Osaka and Kobe, proud of their differences from the modern capital, Tokyo. We take in the pristine beach forests of Tohoku, heading northwest along the coast towards Aomori before crossing the Tsugaru Straits to the port town of Hakodate on Hokkaido, the northernmost of Japan's main islands. Welcome to the Yaeyama Islands, the most geographically remote part of Japan, 1,200 miles southwest of Tokyo. These islands form the southwestern tip of the Ryukyu Islands, stretching from Kyushu all the way down to Yonaguni Island. 67 miles from the coast of Taiwan. This is Ishigaki City on Ishigaki Island, the political, cultural and economic hub of the Yaeyama Islands. The city dates back to the days of the Ryukyu Kingdom. The Ryukyuan kings ruled these islands until 1879 when they were annexed officially by Japan. Ishigaki Island is famous for its pearl-white beaches lush tropical rainforests and coral reefs teeming with underwater life. Kibira Bay on the northwest coast of Ishigaki with its white sands and turquoise waters is particularly popular with tourists. Sightseers gather here to take boat trips out into the bay, hoping to catch sight of the local schools of manta ray. Further inland, Ishigaki Island is covered in dense jungle and mangrove forests. The mangrove forests on Ishigaki Island on the banks of the Fukidogawa River are warm all year round. And although it only covers around 157 hectares, this forest plays host to over 200 species of bird, 
as well as over 60 species of crustacean, including mudskippers and hermit crabs. Just 10 minutes from Ishigaki Island by ferry is Taketomi Island. Surrounded by spectacular coral reefs, Kondoi Beach is a favorite among tourists. But Taketomi Island was not always a tropical paradise. While the island has been inhabited for over a thousand years, the climate was not suitable for rice farming. Villages would set off from the now disused West Pier, rowing for several hours to tend their rice fields on Iriomote Island. Today, the West Pier offers spectacular views of the coral reefs and the turquoise sea. Taketomi is also home to a traditional Ryukyu village. The village of one-story houses with their distinctive red tiled roofs is surrounded by stone walls with roads of unpaved white sand. Lion-like Shiza statues stand outside several homes to ward off evil spirits. Traditional ways of life live on in the village's most popular form of transport. The water buffalo carriage. From the 14th century onwards, the Ryukyu Kingdom was an important player in East Asian politics. Its power came from its ports, which played a crucial part in trade routes across East Asia. The island kingdom carefully balanced its allegiances to its two most powerful neighbors, China and Japan. Okinawa, the largest of the Ryukyu Islands, continues to negotiate its position between two different powers, Japan and the United States. Okinawa was the scene of one of the bloodiest battles of World War II. Capturing the island was of vital strategic importance to US forces in preparation for a planned invasion of mainland Japan. Cape Zampa Lighthouse and the nearby memorial mark a point where Japanese soldiers encourage civilians to jump from the cliff, taking their own lives rather than dying at the hands of the invading US Army. The Allied forces led by the Americans secured control of the island on the 23rd of June, 1945. US forces administered the islands until 1972 when the archipelago took its place as the 47th prefecture of Japan. Naha, the capital city of Okinawa prefecture, has served as the political and economic center of the Ryukyu archipelago for centuries. Today, the island is home to almost 30,000 American troops and a large proportion of the island remains under US military control. In the medieval and early modern periods, Okinawa was the commercial center of the Ryukyu Kingdom's thriving maritime trade routes. Shuri Castle, built in the late 1300s, was the official palace of the ruling Sho kings. Unlike Japanese castles, Shuri Castle was influenced by Chinese architecture with functional and decorative elements similar to that seen in the Forbidden City. The gates and various buildings were painted in red with lacquer, its walls and eaves colorfully decorated with the same red Ryukyuan tiles we saw on the houses on Taketomi. Hall, 
also called the State Palace, faces west towards China. It contains a throne room, royal living and ceremonial areas, and its western facade includes two four-meter-high dragon pillars crafted from sandstone, symbols of the Shou royal family. In 1868, the last of the Shou kings, Shou Tai, was deposed by the Japanese Meiji government and forcibly relocated from Shuri Castle to Tokyo on the mainland, where his descendants live on today as ordinary citizens. Nakagusuku Castle is another Ryukyun fortress built at the summit of a limestone hill. In the 15th century, the castle was home to Gozomaru, a lord whose loyalty to the first king of the unified Ryukyu kingdom was legendary. When Gosomaru was falsely accused of treason, he killed himself in the castle rather than fight his own king's forces. Each year, the story of Gosomaru's loyalty is performed by the local villagers in a two-day festival that takes place in the castle's grounds. Jin Castle was another Ryukyuan residence that provided views out over the trade ships sailing into Okinawa's ports. It was trade that allowed the Ryukyu kingdom to maintain its independence for so long. The true extent of Ryukyu's historic trade network with the rest of the world is still being uncovered by archaeologists and historians today. In 2013, ancient Roman coins were unearthed on Okinawa Island in the ruins of Katsurin Castle, the first ever discovery of ancient Roman artifacts in Japan. become a popular tourist destination, attracting more than six million visitors a year from mainland Japan and from abroad. The newly built 2,000 meter long bridge connecting Yagaji and Kaori Islands offers visitors stunning views of the emerald green ocean. The nearby Okinawa Aquarium, once the largest in the world, is one of a handful of aquariums around the world where visitors can see whale sharks up close. Okinawa is part of hundreds of conservation efforts to protect its wide array of wildlife, including its spectacular coral reefs. Working closely with mainland Japan, its Asian neighbors, and international foundations to sustain its natural environment. This is Hiroshima City, the capital of Hiroshima Prefecture. Located on the Ota River Delta and founded as a castle town in the 16th century, the city grew to become a major political and military base by the time of the Meiji Restoration in 1868. At the heart of the city is Hiroshima Castle, first built in 1589 by the powerful feudal lord Mori Terumoto. Under his reign, the castle became the economic center of the newly developing city of Hiroshima. During World War II, the castle served as the headquarters of the Second General Army, stationed here to head off the projected Allied invasion of the Japanese mainland. This was one of the reasons why the city was selected as the location of the atomic bombing of August 6, 1945. 
To the south of the city lies Hiroshima Bay, a gateway to the many trade routes crisscrossing the Seto Inland Sea. To the northwest of Hiroshima Bay, we find one of Japan's most sacred islands in the native Shinto religion, Itsikushima, popularly known as Miyajima, or Shrine Island. Standing in the bay is the most iconic feature of Itsukushima Shrine, the spectacular Torii Gate. The gate symbolizes the boundary between the spirit and the human worlds, marking the symbolic entrance to the Itsukushima Shrine complex. The shrine complex was founded by the 12th century samurai leader Taira no Kiyomori, who lavished money and attention on the shrine in Itsukushima. Built on pier-like structures over the bay, at high tide it appears to float on the water, separate from the sacred island. Over Itsukushima is Mount Misen. At 535 meters tall, the summit can be reached by the Miyajima ropeway and offers spectacular views across the Seto Inland Sea all the way to Hiroshima City. The hills and mountains surrounding Hiroshima were a crucial factor in selecting the city for atomic bombing. The US military believed that the size and shape of the city would serve to focus the intensity of the blast. At 8.15 on the 6th of August, 1945, the first atomic bomb ever to be used in warfare was dropped on Hiroshima from an American B-29 bomber, Enola Gay. Over 70,000 people were killed in the initial blast, but the final death toll was over 130,000 due to the effects of radiation poisoning. 60% of the city's buildings were destroyed. The Hiroshima Peace Memorial, also known as the Atomic Bomb Dome, was the only structure left standing in the immediate area of the bomb blast. The memorial, as well as the park and museum across the river to the south, are dedicated to preserving the memory of those who lost their lives in the blast and teaching visitors about the effects of the nuclear bomb. It was here in May 2016 that President Obama joined Prime Minister Shinzo Abe at an historic wreath-laying ceremony at the memorial, becoming the first serving US president to visit the site. Both the museum and the city of Hiroshima are passionate advocates for a world free from nuclear weapons. Due south from Hiroshima, along the coast of the Seto Inland Sea, is the city of Kure, major industrial port and host to the second oldest naval dockyard in Japan. After the end of the war, the shipbuilding industry continued to thrive by focusing on the construction of civilian vessels. Today, Kure City is a major international supplier of large cargo ships. It is also the base for Japan's Maritime Self-Defense Force, the JMSDF, founded in 1954. With a fleet of 154 ships and 346 aircraft, its main tasks are to maintain control of the nation's sea lanes and to patrol territorial waters. The Self-Defense Force also participates in UN-led peacekeeping operations. The world's largest ever battleship, the Yamato, was constructed here in Kure's dockyard, 
now the site of the Kure Maritime Museum. Weighing almost 73,000 tons, the Yamato met its end when she was dispatched on a one-way mission to beach herself off the coast of Okinawa. She was destroyed defending the island. Next door at the JMSDF Kure Museum is a decommissioned Yushio-class submarine, the Akishio, once deployed on minesweeping missions after the end of World War II. Here, visitors can get a taste of life on board a submarine. Today, Kure also plays host to a number of annual festivals. In July, Kure's harbour is illuminated by over 5,000 fireworks as part of the Kure Fireworks Festival. From Kure, we travel east along the coast to Himeji. The city is famous for being home to Himeji Castle. Unlike many other Japanese castles, Himeji Castle was never destroyed by war, earthquake or fire and survives to this day as one of the country's 12 original castles. The castle is widely recognized as the finest surviving example of 17th century Japanese castle architecture. In 1993, it became one of Japan's first landmarks to be recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Akashi Kaikyo Bridge is the longest suspension bridge in the world. It is one of the greatest feats of modern Japanese architecture. Spanning a total of 3,911 meters, the bridge connects Kobe with Awaji Island. The bridge is designed to withstand winds of up to 286 kilometers per hour and earthquakes measuring up to magnitude 8.5 on the Richter scale. Just next to the northern part of the bridge is the magnificent 4th century Goshkizuka Kofun. Kofun are megalithic tombs scattered across Japan, constructed for the ruling elite between the 3rd century and the early 7th century. At an impressive 194 meters long, this tomb dates back to the end of the 4th century and is thought to be the burial site of an important clan leader who ruled over the Akashi Kaikyo area. Crossing the Akashi Kaikyo bridge from Awaji Island takes us towards the major cities of the Kansai region, Kobe and Osaka. Kobe is the sixth largest city in Japan. The city was founded in 1899, but the port at Kobe has been of strategic importance to Japan for centuries. This is the American Park, home to the Kobe Port Tower and a memorial to the victims of the Great Hanshin Earthquake of 1995. Over 4,000 people died and over 100,000 buildings were damaged beyond repair. At night, the city takes on a new splendor, as many of its most famous landmarks are lit up in a spectacular display of color. The 
popular spot from which to take in these enchanting views is Kobe Harbourland, a shopping and entertainment district located right on the waterfront. The district's many restaurants, local couples and visiting tourists gaze out over the illuminated Kobe Port Tower and the Kobe Maritime Museum. The spectacular illumination of Kobe at night is part of a tradition which dates back to the Great Hanshin Earthquake. In the wake of the disaster, the Italian government donated 200,000 hand-painted lights to the city. Since many had to live in darkness after the earthquake, without electricity, gas, or even water, putting up lights became a symbol of hope, recovery, and renovation. The Kobe Luminaire Light Festival has been held each December ever since and attracts millions of visitors. East of Kobe, we come to the city of Osaka, the capital of Osaka Prefecture. Japan's second city prides itself on being different from other cities in Japan. Its residents are said to be friendlier and less serious than the people of Tokyo. Edo period, Osaka was known as the nation's kitchen, as rice and other essential goods were transported here before being distributed throughout the rest of the country. Osaka's reputation for food is just as strong today, with the city widely being regarded as the food capital of Japan. The historic trade in Osaka has centered around the district of Nakanoshima, a three-kilometer long sandbank dividing the Dojima and Tasabori rivers. Today, Nakanoshima continues its role as the business and administrative center of Osaka. Osaka and Umeda railway stations are the city's two largest travel hubs. Together, they transport approximately two million people a day and over 820 million people each year. 44 of the world's 50 busiest railway stations are located in Japan. One of the most recognizable landmarks on the Osaka skyline is the Umeda Sky Building. Designed by world-renowned architect Hiroshi Hara, the 173-meter tall building consists of two towers that are connected to each other by the floating garden observatory on the 39th floor. Osaka is also home to the tallest skyscraper in Japan, the Abeno Harukas, which stands at a staggering 300 meters tall. As well as its record-breaking height, the Abeno Harukas also houses the largest department store in Japan. The most recognizable symbol of Osaka 
is the Tsuten Kaku Tower in the Shinsekai District. The original tower was built in 1912. Its design was inspired by two famous Parisian landmarks, the Eiffel Tower and the Arc de Triomphe. Severely damaged by fire, the original tower was dismantled in 1943, but was rebuilt in 1956 to a new height of 103 meters. The tower became a local favorite, and its basement has become a hub for Osaka's thriving comedy scene. It is at night that Osaka truly comes alive. The most popular nighttime entertainment district is the Dotonbori Canal. Famous for its large illuminated billboards, mechanized signs and eccentric atmosphere, the Dotonbori Canal is crammed with restaurants, theatres and karaoke bars. The area has frequently been used as a shooting location for Hollywood films. Osakans are known for their love of food, their distinctive accent, and their comedy, with some of Japan's most famous comedians hailing from Osaka. Osaka is a city which is happy to stand out, and its residents are proud of their reputation for doing things a little differently. Travelling east, we arrive at Nara Prefecture, where we find one of Japan's most remarkable collections of Korfu. Here, magnificent keyhole-shaped mounds dot the landscape, surrounded by wide, water-filled moats. The Japanese ruler, Empress Jingu, is thought to be buried in one of these Korfu. Legend has it that Empress Jingu led a Japanese conquest of Korea at the start of the 3rd century. The city of Nara was established in 710 as the first permanent capital city in Japanese history. Before this point, it was customary to move the capital city after the death of each successive emperor. Nara's status as Japan's capital did not last long. Seventy years later, it was moved north to Nagaoka in a bid to limit the power of a new political force that was worrying Japan's rulers with its growing dominance and radical ideology. That force was Buddhism. Imported from Korea in the 6th century as a gift from the allied kingdom of Kudara, Buddhism's power in Japan began to concentrate around the seven great temples of Nara. One of these was Kofuku-ji. Standing at five stories tall, its pagoda is the second tallest in Japan. In order to escape the increasing influence of these temples, the capital city was moved away from Nara in 784. period that Nara was the permanent capital of Japan, the emperor resided at Heijo Palace. The original palace consisted of a vast walled enclosure containing within it several ceremonial and administrative buildings and a separate walled residential compound for the emperor and the imperial consorts. When the capital was moved away from Nara, the palace was abandoned and its structures dismantled and moved or left to perish. The site was taken over and used for agriculture for hundreds of years, but its location was never forgotten, paving the way for grand reconstruction projects during the Meiji period. 
The former audience hall was the largest building on the palace grounds, and its reconstruction was completed in 2010. The story of Nara and its surrounding regions is one of competing claims over power and identity in Japan. We have seen how those early struggles have left their mark on the country today. Stretching out to the south of Nara is the Kii Peninsula, a remote, mountainous region home to a network of ancient pilgrimage routes and sublime natural wonders. This is the Fudo Nanai no Taki waterfall. For hundreds of years, waterfalls such as this one have been used by pilgrims to practice misogi, the Shinto practice of ritual purification whereby worshippers place themselves within the cascading flow of a waterfall and wash themselves in order to rid the body of pollution. With its abundance of streams, rivers and waterfalls, the region remains one of Japan's favorite natural escapes. The spiritual heart of the Kii Peninsula can be found at the Shinto Shrine at Oyunohara. It is here that the historic pilgrimage routes of the Kii mountain range traditionally end. The entrance to the site is marked by an impressive Tori Gate, which at 34 meters high and 42 meters wide is the largest Tori Gate in the world. the religious heritage of this area so unique is the extent to which the region has combined native Shintoist beliefs with Buddhist teachings to form a harmonious fusion of religious practice. Nowhere is this more evident than at the nearby Nachi Falls, where a Buddhist temple and Shinto shrine occupy the same grounds, functioning as one combined religious institution. The waterfall itself is the location of the annual 1,700-year-old Nachi Fire Festival, in which participants parade along the stone staircase leading to the waterfall, waving gigantic flaming torches in front of them. The southern section of the Kii Peninsula makes up the Wakayama Prefecture, and its coastline contains a number of geological curiosities. Getsu Island, located off the coast of Shirahama, features a natural arch carved out by waves eroding its sandstone walls. Further to the east lie the Hashigui-Iwa rocks, a mysterious set of 40 stone pillars which stretch out in a line for over 800 meters. According to local legend, the rocks are left over from when Kobo Daishi, the founder of Koyasan Shingon Buddhism, was challenged by a devil to build a bridge across the sea. Traveling north from Nara Prefecture 
to the other end of Honshu, we reach Aomori Prefecture. percent of the prefecture has been designated national parkland, including the Fujimi Lake Park, home to Japan's longest wooden bridge. The Tsuru no Mai Bridge is made out of valuable Hiba wood and designed to resemble two cranes flying low over the surface of the water. The crane is a revered bird in Japanese culture and is said to represent longevity and happiness. Local superstition believes that the bridge also will bring long life to those that cross it. On Honshu's northwestern coast, earthquakes have created enormous rock terraces jutting out into the sea. stand as a reminder of Japan's position on the highly volatile Pacific Ring of Fire, an area in which the majority of the planet's earthquakes and volcanoes occur. Further inland, the Tohoku region is host to the largest virgin beach forest in East Asia. This pristine forest is the last of its kind in Japan and provides a living example of the flora and fauna that once covered the hills and mountain slopes of northern Japan. The Japanese sero, the Japanese black bear and 87 different species of bird are just some of the wildlife that call this dense forest home. One of the most popular hikes in the area follows the Juniko, a series of 12 enchanting lakes and ponds that are scattered throughout the wood. In fall, the climate changes quickly from a humid summer to a cold winter, creating a dramatic explosion of oranges, golds and bright reds in forests across the country. The changing autumn leaves are called momiji, and just like the cherry blossom in spring, visitors from across the country gather at famous locations such as the Tohoku region to witness this phenomenon. The northern coast of the island of Honshu is the important transit city of Aomori. With Japan's rapid industrialization in the second half of the 19th century, Aomori grew to prominence as a strategic port connecting Honshu Island with Hokkaido Island to the north. The two islands were brought even closer with the construction of the undersea Seikan Railway Tunnel, the second longest tunnel in the world. On the remote northeastern cape of Honshu Island, Japan hides its most dramatic section of coastline the sea cliffs of Hotoke Gaura. Here, jagged, teeth-like rock formations jut out across two kilometers of coastline.
The resemblance of the rocks here to standing Buddhist statues has led to many being named after religious figures from Buddhist teachings. Leaving the island of Honshu behind, we cross the Tsugaru Straits to the island of Hokkaido, Japan's largest and northernmost prefecture and the second largest island in Japan. Hokkaido, Japan's wild north, has a unique history and culture shaped by its remote geographical location. Like Okinawa in the south, Hokkaido has had an uneasy relationship with the rulers of Japan. And in the mid-19th century, Hokkaido nearly gained independence from Japan altogether. This took place during the Boshin Civil War that began in 1868 between the Tokugawa shogunate, who had ruled Japan for over 200 years, and an alliance of forces loyal to the emperor. The Tokugawa shogunate suffered early defeats and were forced to retreat north to Hokkaido, where they barricaded themselves in Fort Goryokaku, a massive star-shaped fortress. Here they announced the establishment of a new state called the Republic of Ezo. The pro-imperial forces were not deterred and proceeded to invade Hokkaido. It was here at Fort Goryokaku that the Tokugawa shogunate forces made their final stand before finally surrendering to the invading army, bringing to an end the Boshin Civil War and the short-lived Ezo Republic. The defeat of the Tokugawa shogunate marked the beginning of the Meiji era, during which Japan radically transformed from being an isolated, feudal society to being an open, outward-looking one. New fashions and styles began to emerge, influenced by increasing interaction with the West. The old public hall of Hakodate Ward is one example of the changing architecture of this period. This ornate mansion was built in 1910 in a blend of Western and Japanese styles. The area around the public hall became popular with foreign traders who moved to Japan after it relaxed its isolationist policies. The influence of this foreign community can still be seen today in the district's incredible variety of architectural styles. Being so far north, the climate of Hokkaido is far colder than the rest of Japan. The region's proximity to cold air blowing down from Siberia makes it one of the snowiest places on the planet. Whilst visiting these snowy mountains in 1896, nine French monks founded a male-only Trappist Roman Catholic monastery. Today, 40 monks are still resident inside the monastery, and although casual visitors are strictly forbidden, the cookies and butter made by the monks are popular souvenirs of Hakodate. As well as Roman Catholics, Japan is home to many religions. However, in the recent past, Hokkaido has also been the site of religious and ethnic persecution. While Hokkaido is largely integrated as an official prefecture of Japan, the legacy of Hokkaido's indigenous people, the Ainu, lives on. The Ainu people settled on the island long before the arrival of the Japanese, hunting and trading with Russia and China to the north and the west. Hokkaido was officially annexed by Japan in 1868 to act both as a buffer to the threat of Russia to the north and as a source of further wealth and resources to support Japan's growing empire. Today, 
the Ainu have achieved a great deal in their struggle for national and international recognition. And they continue to call both for Ainu rights and the realization of a multicultural and multi-ethnic society in Japan. The history of Japan's far north, like the islands in the distant south, reveal a diverse, complex story behind the island nation of Japan today. This diversity is reflected throughout the country, in its wild landscapes, its sacred sites, and in the colorful variety of its city streets. Japan's monuments, castles, and the landscape itself reveal the secrets behind how Japan has been shaped over its long history, fought over by competing factions and powers to become a country that seeks to learn from its past, a nation for everyone who calls Japan home. <laughs>